Welcome to this lunchtime live from Lee's Fashion Futures. Uh, unfortunately, my iPad's just started telling me that we've gone live. It's a few seconds behind. Apologies for that, if you could hear that there. And I got a little bit distracted. Let's start again. Welcome to this lunchtime live from Leeds Fashion Futures, which is Zero Waste Leeds project with the RSA, looking at how we can have a more sustainable approach to fashion on a city level and what we need to do to make that happen. Now, this project has identified three key themes. They are heritage and tradition, valuing our clothes and skills and resources. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. How do you get handy with a needle or more so that we can keep our clothes going for longer? We can keep loving our clothes. We can keep them as part of ourselves. What do we need to do? so that we can reduce waste. Before I introduce the very brilliant people who are going to infuse you to get involved in all of this, I'm Peg Alexander, Leeds-based presenter and journalist and person who cares very deeply about making our city a zero waste city. Uh, I also do care about clothes and fashion. Uh, and last year, I did pledge not to buy any new, new clothes. Uh, I'm kind of a bit well known for only wearing second-hand clothes on telly or interviewing famous people. The more famous the person, the cheaper the outfit gets. It's kind of like a bit of a principle. But today, talking to us are Dawn Wood and Sally Cook. So let me introduce them. Dawn has been a fashion cost, a fashion designer, a costume designer, a maker for, it says here, many centuries, but I'm sure Feels that's like not, not sure that's not true, Dawn. Uh, making for film, theatre and museums as well as her own slow fashion label. She's also the CEO of the social enterprise Fabrication, which teaches crafts and sewing skills and manages their fashion co-working space. Absolutely brilliant to have you, Dawn. Thank you for joining us on the call. And we've also got Sally, Sally Cook, who is a maker, designer and lifelong sewist. I'm not sure that's the right phrase, sewing, uh, Sally, a lifelong sewist. It sounds a bit, it sounds a bit, I don't know, interesting, but you are doing some doctoral research, uh, exploring how people learn to sew and the difference that it makes to our relationship with clothes. So thank you for joining us as well today. Uh, Sally and Dawn are both part of the Leeds Fashion Future Skills and Resources group who are creating sewing videos that we're sharing on our YouTube page. So uh, make sure you uh, sign up for those because they're not going to be uh, kind of some American thing telling you how to do something. They're right here in right here in our own accents telling us uh, how to do it. And we're also very, very pleased that we've got Suzanne Nichols from Zero Waste Leeds joining us as well uh, to join in the conversation. What I would say is we've got a few of you watching already. Uh, I am monitoring comments. Um, so please join in the discussion. Ask anything you want. Make a comment. We'll bring them into the conversation. Uh, please do join in over the next half hour. So let's get going. Sally, Sally, I mean, this research that you're doing, you know, um, you've, you've found that lots of people, haven't you, they, they really want to be part of trying to increase their skills so we can have that relationship back with our clothes. Yeah, well, um, I'm, a, I'm a student at Nottingham Trent University and I've, I've been doing my PhD for about a year. Uh, and um, I mean, when I pitched to do the piece of research, um, I was very sure that sewing was part of the response that we needed to make uh, to make fashion more sustainable. It's something that used to be quite common um, that, uh, you know, is, is less frequently taught, less easily passed on these days. Um, yet there's an enormous interest in it. And as soon as I started actually doing this research, that just became more and more evident. Um, and I've recently put out a call for participants uh, wh where I'm going to be working with some uh, complete beginners to sewing. And I've had a huge number of people contact me because they're interested in it. So I just think that's fascinating. It seems even more pertinent now than it did when I, uh, when I, you know, set off on this journey. And also last year with the pandemic and everything, yeah. who knew that that would result in a kind of rush on sewing machines? I know. It's all getting really crafty. I mean, I find this kind of quite weird because, I mean, I realise that I'm quite old. But, you know, when I was younger, the idea, Dawn, you know, the idea that, I mean, I hate to use gender stereotypes, but we are going back a bit. And so there were gender stereotypes. But, you know, being a girl, there was no way you grew up without knowing how to darn something, how to put a button on, how to fix a zip. You know, you, it was almost like that That was just part of, of growing up. But of course, and so I think everybody can do that, but it's not the case, is it? 
No, I mean, I'm the same. I grew up, my mum taught me to sew. She loved when I was a baby. Uh, my grandma knitted, she knitted. So I, I've done those things since I could hold a needle, you know, whatever type of needle I've done. My mum learned to crochet from the lady next door. I was about seven. I joined in, you know, and learned. And, and so it's just for me, it's as natural as breathing. So mm -hmm. I'm always quite surprised that people can't do Because if I could do it, it must be quite easy. You know, <laughs> I don't I don't think what I could do is quite hard. Uh, so, yeah, it, it always does surprise me. I also have a, a kind of very practical mum who just did stuff. So I've always, just, whatever it was, you know, I always remember when my, my brother was about 14, he played cricket and he wanted a, a cable knitting, you know, cable. Uh, knitting yeah. cable sweater. So no, I remember said, how to do cable. With you so well, my mum said to us, this is my 14 year old brother. Uh, but she's a Yorkshire woman, so, you know, so you didn't know. And she went, well, here's the wool, here's the needle, here's the pattern. If you want one, you know what to do. And he made it. He wouldn't have dared not to, you know. <laughs> he his, but he did, you know. So that is how I grew up. So I, you know, I, I had the best dressed dolls around, uh, you know. Uh, they all had, we all had matching outfits. Uh, and, yeah, so, so for me, it's quite surprising that people can't do this. And there is such a market for people wanting to do covers. I mean, I'm going to share a story here as well, because when I was a teenager, I was a little bit wild, funnily enough, right? I grew up in Leeds in the 80s, do you know what I mean? And anyone self-respecting who grew up in Leeds in the 80s was a goth, right? It's just, just the way that it was. But I was quite a colourful goth, surprise, surprise. And um, I didn't have much money, though. Didn't have a lot of money. And I used to regularly get old sheets, right? And um, I used to dye them in a biscuit tin on the stove, you know, with those tiny little pots of dye on. Do you remember that before you could stick them in the washing machine, you used to put them in a, with a biscuit tin on the stove, boil yep. them in that, and then make outfits out of them. You know, I'd run them up on a Friday night for the for the phono in the warehouse. I mean, but that idea is like such an alien concept these days, isn't it? That you might just run run something up. To wear it, and of course they were individual. No, they were also awful. Let's be honest, they were awful. Well, you know, but no one had those outfits that's for sure. The army, yeah, the army stores on the top of the hedgerow was a mecca for clothing. We'd do the same. We'd go in long johns and old t-shirts, and you know, the little buttons. But come home, just dye them in the same way, tie dye, write on them, the whole thing. You know, we would look very different. Um, but yeah, very eighties vibe. We probably shouldn't go back there. Well, I know, but but it did mean that we had that connection with the clothes, Sally. I mean, you were talking about that as well. That, and I love that. About a year ago, I did, um, and it's when I first met you, Don, when we did some interviews for Zero Waste Fashion Week last year, and I chatted to this fabulous, fabulous designer, Dom, who who does all his stuff using recycled materials, and he was talking about that whole concept of our clothes having stories, you know. And we've lost that. We've lost that idea that you look at a piece of your clothes and you go. Do you know what? I remember what happened one time when I was wearing that and that got me through that time. And do you know, what? I remember when that did fit me and it doesn't anymore in lockdown. And, you know, Sally, we have got those stories, haven't we? We need to go back to that. Yeah, and that really came through. And I met with a bunch of people yesterday who'd put themselves forward for this research that I'm doing. And I asked them all, you know, why they were interested in sewing now. And that was one of the things that came through, just people wanting to feel more connected to their stuff not just wanting it to kind of pass through their lives, but actually wanting to, um, you know, get their hands on it and, um, and, and kind of just be more considered about it, I think. So a lot of people wanting to um, alter. So a lot of people were already buying secondhand quite a lot, but wanting to be able to adapt things and alter them and make them fit. And so those kind of sewing skills, as well as people who wanted to make from scratch because they wanted to, you know, they wanted to be able to tell the whole story of that that garment in a way. Um, We've got Dawn, yeah. Dawn, who's one of the people watching us. We've got quite a few people, by the way. What Dawn, she, uh, Dawn Bridal, she says, I love this topic. I'm glad you do, Dawn. Uh, she says, I'm a sewer running my own business based in Garforth, making reusable products like sandwich wraps, cosmetic remover pads, um, paper towels, cloth sanitary pads. Thank you, ladies, she says. Oh, because, I mean, you know, I'm sure Dawn, anyone else who's watching, share us some of your stories about, you know, with your clothes and and and, and what, what they mean to you. Because coming back to Dawn Wood, uh, Dawn, you know, when, when you have got those basic skills, you can keep your clothes going for longer. And I do understand why people want to throw them out. I just want to keep wearing the clothes that I love. I get so, I mean, this jumper, it's got bubbles on it. And I'm so upset because I just want to wear it all the time. 
I have things in my wardrobe that will never get an arm or a leg in again, but they ain't going anywhere, you know. But I get one of one of the things that we uh, that we also start that we we do as a class is actually remaking a garment that you might have or love that is so worn to death. And you can incorporate bits of that into it, but we can actually take a pattern from it, make it your now size, you know, uh, et cetera, and, and then incorporate bits and pieces into it as well. So you keep it going and going. It's like that, you know, the, the, the engineer's broom or whatever, which is the original bit. But you can still do that with your clothes. You can, you know, you can do alterations. You can turn a, a you know, say I said it before, a dress into a top and a skirt because the, the dress doesn't work on you. But you say you can dress. do that, but if you've never done it, surely that is dead hard, is it not? It's, once you have the basic principle, actually, it's not hard. You literally just, if you're doing a dress and a skirt, you literally just cut it across the middle. Don't be afraid. It's only fabric. I know that scandalous fabric is, is king and gold. <laughs> uh, but also, you know, you can then, you can easily refer it. You can, and just put a ribbon around it. And you've got a skirt. It's, it's, it's not that difficult once you have a basic understanding and also lose fear the main thing is the fear of cutting into something i'm a demon with scissors i chop my hair i do whatever you know <laughs> uh, but <laughs> uh, i don't really need doing right now because i'm just a hairdresser but don't be afraid you can you can alter it you can amend it you can do all sorts of stuff with it is that what you're finding the, the newbies coming through sally that you know there is that fear of you know because fabric's quite expensive these days isn't it it is yeah yeah i mean we haven't really got into that aspect of it yet but um certainly people being very scared of sewing machines as well so not so much the kind of cutting it into fabric i've not really come across that so much yet but but yeah people just having sewing machines i mean a lot more people mm -hmm. seem to have sewing machines than actually know how to use yeah. them or use them regularly yeah um, and a lot of that seems to be fear you know maybe a, a bit of kind of not being confident that you know how to yeah. spread it and stuff but also just being frightened to put your foot on the pedal well because they do go quite fast i mean this is showing my age i mean i'm not this old but i genuinely did learn on i learned on one of those <laughs> which was an old you know i'm not that old but it didn't take the fear out of it because you do put your foot down and if you haven't got your foot control but if you drive a car you'll be all right with a bit of pedal it's control driving a car I it's used not going to be worse drive. than driving a car if you get the pedal wrong is it yeah. I use driving analogies all the time in sewing. And my clutch control, once I came to learn to drive, was perfect because I'd done it for years. You know, <laughs> you just know where that biting point is. Anyway, he'll start saying, you know, saying some silk. It's no difference. You know, completely. Well, the first thing we do when I run a class is I actually make people take the machines apart. And we, we do all the things that are going to go wrong. So they're bobbling underneath. I yeah. make, them make the, the, the tension go wrong with a bobbin. Mm. So they know what that feels like. Because so many who come to class go, oh, this happened and I just threw it in a corner, I couldn't touch it anymore. And it's like, actually, all you need to do was this. All you did was your needle broke, you put it back in in the wrong way. Yeah. So we do all those things that go wrong first and take the mystery out. So if you take the top off, I love the modern ones, you can't do that, but if you've got a slightly older one, you can take the top off and go, all it is is this. Yeah. You know, so again, it's that mystery of a car engine you know, and, and kind of seeing how that will work. Mm -hmm. And once you, you tell people how to fix the problem, then again, that fear is, it's like, oh, is that all it is? Mm -hmm. like, okay. Um, I'm very much a practical hands-on, right, all this is going to go wrong, so this is how you fix it. Yeah. Uh, kind of way, a way of teaching, and then you can get going again. And especially if you're doing stuff with a, uh, just hand sewing as well, you know, fixing, I don't know, buttons or that sort of thing. Again, you're not really, you know, if you swap a button and it doesn't look well, doesn't look any good, you just cut it off and start so again. We shouldn't be that close to look at it anyway. We're too much distancing. Just to let you know some more com oh, oh, Stitch Ripper, come on, talk to us about the Stitch kid. Ripper. You see, look, we're all like, oh, oh yeah, you've got a Stitch Ripper there. Yeah. It's my favourite thing. I mean, you know, I've been sewing all my life but I still make loads of mistakes. God, yeah. You just have to unpick them. And these are called stitch rippers, but I really don't like the name because actually you don't really want to be ripping with it. That's a bit aggressive, yeah. um, but I call it an unpicker. Okay. And I unpick a lot of things and it's, yeah, don't sew without one. You'll definitely yeah. need one. And to be fair, I mean, I don't sew that much these days, but I have to be honest and say, I have got a degree in, I've got an A-level in sewing and I've got a degree in sewing and knitting from one of the top fashion schools in the country. And that, my my unpicker 
gets a lot of action. When yeah, yeah. You know, the number of things are so on back to front and inside out and, oh, blimey, you know. Yeah. That's definitely. what you do. You just take out the stitches. And remember, when you do your first few, you can then just pull it out. One of the, one of the, the most Ooh. important things I learned when I went to fashion college was how to unpick quickly. Yeah. <laughs> The technique to just take it all out quite quickly. Yeah. yeah. And don't worry if you sew over your fingers, because after a while, when sewing over <laughs> your fingers, your skin gets a bit hardened to it and you don't notice it. Uh, let's just go to some comments that we've got here. Dawn, uh, Dawn again, she said she's just made the daughter a pair of leggings. Actually, that's dead impressive. She said they were much better as I'd made them. And that's so special. Oh, isn't that lovely as well? Anna's also, she wants your opinion. Uh, and Suzanne, join in on this as well. Please do. She says, what's your opinion on knitting, crocheting new clothes? Obviously, the ideal is just to reuse clothes, but I would like to make new clothes, but I feel bad about buying brand new wool for it. So who's got some uh, suggestions and advice or thoughts? Take old that? jumpers apart. You can, uh, you know, you can use old wool, um, you know, and just, just kind of take things apart. If you've got holes in them, unravel them, start the wool again. I, I spent hours as a kid rewinding old balls of wool with my grandma, you know, and doing skeins, I'm sure. Okay, but if that was a Sunday afternoon pastime on a visit. Just, we can all do that, can't we? Um, and um, um, yeah, so, but also, you know, a lot of a lot of places you can buy, not necessarily new wool, but it's ends, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of fabrics I use, if they are new, they're ends of designer rolls, they're oddments um, and things like that. I've got a stash of old bits of wool that have come. There's always a ball left when you've made something. You always get one too many, don't you? And I've just got piles and piles of odd balls so you you know you can just knit them all up uh crush them all up nothing's waste in in that respect then and of course crochet that's the wonderful thing about crochet is yeah. that you can use so many different colors and different textures of the wall can't you you don't have to have it all matching no i have to confess i'm not a knitter or a crocheter but you can make um yarn can't you for crochet out of t-shirt fabric yeah. and stuff yeah. if you've got old t-shirts and things yeah, plastic old tights. I used to, uh, in the 80s, I used to have a number of bags made for old tights that you just cut up when you had a hole in them because it's great stretch yarn. Um, you know, um, there's little fishnet bags you can do quite easily crochet. To be fair, though, in the 80s, when I had a hole in my thing, I used to cut a hole in me. Oh, we just made them bigger, didn't we? <laughs> well, Oh, yeah, oh, I used to, this, this is showing me age now, this is the, right, but I used, used to cut a hole in the crotch of the fish, fishnet tights, and then you put it over your head, and yeah, you put your fingers top. at the end, so you put, and then you put your fingers through the holes, so the tights would stop about there, so you've got basically fishnet tights on upside down, and then you put your outfit on top, so you've got your fishnets up your arms. <laughs> Classic goth. <laughs> Proper, I mean, that was there. We're getting ultra goth, aren't we? So, it just shows how versatile things are. So, you know, just a big scarf can be. Uh, I've got quite a few, you know, old scarves my grandma's that I used to use when, when I was a little bit smaller, uh, you know, that just made great little summer tops or tie them up, little, you know, a little top, little, you know, you can knock. I've got some lovely little 40s um, kind of instructions in because like, I collect a lot of old sewing manuals and things like that of how to turn a scarf into a pair of shorts or a little summer skirt you know all those wonderful kind of bits just a fabric scrap um yeah. i used to when again in the early we used to go out i'd just get a length of fabric and just drape it in different ways lots of safety pins there's a frock for that now it turned into something else another point um, and there's know. loads of videos on Facebook, isn't there, of different things that you can do with a piece of fabric. And when yeah. I watch them, I'm just constantly amazed. You know, what's your thoughts, Suzanne, on the on the crocheting and using up old wool? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that surprised me when I was starting out on this project was that somebody had said actually sewing from, you know, just sewing a, a dress or making a dress isn't necessarily a sustainable option and and that really surprised me because I always thought well you know if I could just do that and not buy from you know a shop then that's going to be much better but I was really disappointed when I found that out but it does make sense if you think about like pattern cutting and just the amount of the amount of waste and it was interesting because I had um, a chat with uh, Hainsworth's the Hainsworth's mill um, last week and that and you know they're working really really hard now to minimize the amount of of waste in in pattern cutting and also um 
we've got a connection with uh, Community Clothing, which is uh, Patrick Grant's business. And, uh, and Jenny from there gave us a bit of a tour of, of their factory. And again, that the, the waste side of it is something they, they're really, really like doing their very best to kind of, I think they've got like, um, I, I don't know exactly the ins and outs, but I think Haynes was saying that the, the waste now is down to like a, a millimeter um, wow. in terms of the cutting, which is amazing. And it's great to see that real focus on uh, on reducing the waste. Because um, I think the project started for us, the, the sort of fashion, sustainable fashion work um, around realizing that 4,000 tons of textile waste ends up in Leeds bins every year. So the waste side of it is just, it is quite shocking. Um, and I'm not sure people always realize that in terms of fashion. When we hear about fast fashion and but I think I'd, I think Oxfam had said that uh, in terms of carbon emissions in the environment, the the clothing industry is responsible for more carbon emissions than shipping and aviation combined. So we always hear about flying and how bad that is, but we don't always realise, um, um, you know. So so just and the other thing that that is coming to my mind when when you're talking there, Dawn and and Sally to a degree, and you, Pegs, that you're all um, seasoned sewers and. I'm, I'm not, and some of the stuff you're talking about, I'm thinking, God, that sounds really difficult. And, you know, I, I know how to sew a button on and that's kind of about it. But yeah, there is something about confidence, isn't there as well? And kind of knowing um, how to do things. And I do think like that, what we were talking about earlier, Dawn, about having a really nice, comfortable environment. You were saying like you provide cakes and tea and, and that there's kind of a buddying up system that you've got somebody to, um, to ask when things go wrong and um but yeah they're just some of the things that are coming to mind but that yeah it's uh i'd love to be able to sew like you do but i, I can't when we get out of lockdown yeah, yeah. You can. <laughs> you can start running them again you can take me on as a project definitely <laughs> what, yeah, do you, project. what do you need you suzanne to get you to kind of up your confidence because that's a big part of what we're all trying to do here through these skills uh, the skills working group is about how can we get more people in the city to to do this and if confidence is a big issue yeah I mean it's I suppose it's prioritizing it isn't it I mean I can knit and I, I love knitting and I liked what you were saying Dawn about learning the you know understanding a sewing machine and how to take it apart because I, I find with knitting if when somebody's taught me through how to unpick what you've done then then I can go off and I know and it's kind of breaking down the enigma of it sort of thing so you, you gain a lot of confidence that way um I don't know it's an odd one because I, I've always bought secondhand clothes and I am five foot nine so I you know I could have done with yeah like being able to take things up and I can, I can just about take up a hem but um I guess it is just those kind of groups that you're talking about that kind of doing one of those on an evening and being around people that and making it fun and being around people who have lots of skills and um, and and also there's the thing about um, schools um, and and where these skills are learnt originally um, and Sally and Dawn are both part of the Leeds Fashion Futures um, Skills and Resources group and that's something like we're looking at there there's a textile teacher in in that group and you know she's working really hard to get schools doing more of this um, but it's just not prioritised, so it's it's really hard. But I do think starting with children, because once you learn something, because I think that's what all of you were saying, that you learnt these skills as a child. I, I didn't. My mum never taught me how to sew or anything. And we did knitting at school, and I know still know how to knit, but I don't... Um, I just don't have those sewing skills. So starting with children is a good... Could be a good, yeah. good way to do yeah, it. What about online, Sally? Can we do stuff online? Because I know that I first met you because you hosted the World's first online symposium. <laughs> yes, it was an excuse to chat about sewing whilst also sewing, um, which yeah was quite good fun. And I mean, I've never been that much involved in kind of putting videos out there or doing that kind of online instruction. But the people that I interviewed last year for my project had all, bar one, had all pretty much done their learning at home on their own with the help of the internet. Um, so it is possible to to kind of glean enough information 
that way to kind of successfully make a garment if you're determined enough. Um, and, you know, they'd all made uh, wearable things that they were happy with and had plans to continue. So, um, yeah, there's there's oodles of stuff out there. Some of it's really irritating, some of it's really bad, but loads of it's great. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's something for everybody. It, it, it's kind of partly, you know, the style of instruction that you like or and a lot of the the kind of indie patterns so there's a whole new generation at least 200 small companies who are doing you know designing patterns that they sell as pdfs and what have you and a lot of them do kind of sew alongs and there's just oodles of content out there um if, if you really want to do it we're starting to share some stuff by Leeds Fashion Futures, but they're just they're mostly very short videos on how to how to do certain things or fix certain things. Uh, but that's a kind of starting point. And we're, we're starting with beginners sewing skills, which I think is a really good idea. And then we'll move on to intermediary and advanced. But just yeah, I think we're we're, we're doing some like really basic ones, like so how to thread, to, needle. To, uh, thread a needle, yeah, to eventually thread a sewing machine. But th those sorts of things, I suppose, just to get people people started on that journey um, and the other thing uh, one idea I mean the great thing about the group which has really come out of this project is is people coming up with ideas and I think Sally one of your ideas around something like a peddler's arms um, you know you've got the peddler's arms in in Leeds and doing something like that for so peddler's arms being where people who ride bikes all get together and they go and fix each other's bikes yeah, and I think it's that kind of thing that would really appeal to somebody like me, just some, where you can kind of go down somewhere. And I love that idea. And that's something that we will explore and just see if we can get off the ground, I think, as part of this project. Yeah, I mean, she commented, she said uh, she used to teach textiles up to a level. And I can honestly say, this is what Moira says, I can honestly say the amount of info and help available through Facebook groups and the internet has made, made it so much more accessible. I still learn that way, things I would never have learned in school. Yeah. Yeah, I, there are still things that I kind of think, oh, yeah, I can't quite remember how to do that. Oh, I'll watch a YouTube video. And then it kind of all starts to make sense again and you just go off and do it. Um, so yeah, even as a practice sewer, I do that. It is it is, it is amazing how uh, something like the internet has actually helped um, you know um, people just learn how to do whatever um, you know and um, kind of give that confidence as well of just trying something at home. You're not judged and you can just have a go really. Um, rather than you know, and I I mean I still buy books constantly on on different techniques and. And, and practice and you know and, and you know new bits and pieces as well that I've never learned or never tried to do and um, I'm treating myself to some flower making tools this lockdown because I've always wanted to make silk flowers <laughs> using all those scraps. Yeah that's yeah. a great idea because as you say you only need small amounts of mm, yeah I had this running battle with my hubby about how much scrap I kind of keep <laughs> and uh and you know, it's kind of things that big. It's like I make lingerie, so I kind of go, well, you know, I make bra, so I can use that much on a bra. You know, it's like yeah, but it's, it's, scr it's scratchy linen door. Don't give me that excuse for that. But, oh yeah, okay, good point. <laughs> but there's always a use for something. Yeah, well, well, that's sorry. I wonder, I wonder if more people are are sewing now because of lockdown. I mean, I know didn't sewing machines. Um, sold out, sell out across the country at one point. It's the yeah, same right. as compost bins, like sort of equivalent. But it's really interesting. <laughs> it's really interesting. Like it's really hard to get hold of one now. I think. Yeah, at the basic level machines. There was a real kind of. I don't know how it is now, but certainly initially. Mm. With that and bicycles, they're like my two favourite inventions, and they both global pandemic. They both yeah, uh, bikes as well. out, which is amazing. I just had another thought on kind of waste. We were talking about how much waste there is potentially from sewing, and mm. how it, you know maybe that for some people is a, a reason that they're nervous to get started and try something. And I think Peggy, you mentioned um, making things out of sheets, um, so using things that are. Um, kind of worn out for their current purpose that you can that you can use to to kind of try out your skills. One of the um, sewers I interviewed last year um, had had collected old duvet covers from all of her family and friends just to get her confidence up to start making garments. And actually, she was going out in some of the things that she'd made. She was she was quite happy to go out in them. And just going back to something that you said earlier about, I mean, I I went to a school where you didn't you could wear any white blouse. It didn't matter what it looked like um it didn't have to be a formal kind of school shirt 
Um, and I made lots of my school shirts out of the sides of sheets where the sheets are kind of worn out in the middle. You can still make stuff out of the stuff up the sides. Nobody ever noticed. I like that. On the opposite side, I made some really nice duvet covers um, out of old scraps of fabric. And then what I did was I put an old sheet for the underside, which you're never going to see, just use an old sheet and then, you know, patch, sort of, not quite patchwork, but, you know, old duvet covers. So you, so you can turn them back around the other way again. And it's just amazing what you can do. Yeah. Well, again, that, you know, the whole patchwork culture comes from, using up what you have you can no longer wear you know and things like rag rugs and stuff you know things get to a point so then you turn them into another practical usage so that um you know waste there is no waste um you know uh, when you going back i always say the centuries bit because i make historical clothing you know, for museums things like that you know it's this concept of having all the the amount of clothes that we have today is very alien it's only come about in the last what 30 years really um, you know, with the advent of such fast global fashion, um, whereas before you didn't have many clothes, you know, even very posh people in, in another century, or even in, into the 20th century, would only have, you know, about Sunday, what well, you know, your Sunday best and your workday clothing, maybe two or three things that you just changed around. You didn't wash them all the time, you, you know, you cleaned them, but you didn't wash them, you do air them, um, you know, all the household manuals I I have show you how to take spots from clothes, not how to wash them fully, it's how to take a little bit and then how to air them and what the best, you know, herbs are for making them smell better. And, you know, that goes right into things like 40s and 50s, 1940s and 50s, I've got manuals. Um, you know, we just, we just have that consumption. I, I mean, around the whole house, basically, um, and, and um, I'm kind of thing. Uh, but the fact that we have so many clothes is quite an alien new concept. Um, so let me ask you, Dawn, as, as the, the, the kind of the most experienced sewer then amongst us, do you still, as they used to do, do you actually turn your collars and your cuffs? Or? I've been I've been known to, I've got a darning needle and a, and, a, and a little mushroom and I know how to use it. I might not do my socks these days because, again, when they're just the, the, you know, three for five pounds pack, uh, they don't quite darn in the same way, but I have been known to. And I will turn fabrics into cushions. Old pillows that are no good on the bed now, I you know, they go into, into cushion covers. Mm. Uh, and I use old fabrics and things to make cushions from and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think, so you're winning there. Well, Joanne's made a comment as well on Facebook. She says, during lockdown, I've discovered remaking old clothes into stuffed toys. A bit similar, like you were saying about the old rag rag car carpets and things and to stuff toys as memory bears stroke comforters oh isn't that nice she says really lovely and well received in the current climate of loss and stress and reuses otherwise outdated or older clothes which may otherwise be binned i love that because you know they're doing something really great for other people and and using stuff up you know um yeah there's there's loads we can do with things isn't yeah. there and then on that kind of memory front as well, there's things that I've done, people or people have done it in classes and things like that. Their father may have died, so they have all the only ties. So what can you turn them into? So just unpicking them can you become a cushion or a, you know a garment or, or an old shirt. And you know, and again the memory quilts from, from babies' clothes and as they get older, um, you know, all those. So again, so that then tell we go back to telling a story through an item. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you, you have a finished object um, that becomes part of your family ancestry, really, because, um, you know, it, it's got that memory of, of somebody else within it, which mm -hmm. is a beautiful thing to do, um, you know, as a tribute, really. Um, absolutely lovely although it can go too far i don't know how many times this story is going to get told over these because we are doing a whole series of talks about clothes and uh, i'm going to have to watch it for retelling the same stories but we do have different viewers right you can take the family clothes thing a bit too far right so i am the youngest of nine right when you've got underpants that six of your brothers have worn before you that's taking it a bit, a bit too far, far isn't it don't turn them into cushion covers at the end. <laughs> <laughs> or even a rag rug to cut up. Or a <laughs> 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 
There's actually a worse story that I can tell, but I'm not going to tell it. I'll, I'll that to see whether, whether I get I get the courage up to actually tell the worst story of all to do with secondhand underpants. But anyway, I think we've probably got to, <laughs> got to the end of this. Let's just go around all three of you. Kind of one one last tip, one last thought for uh, for people watching about uh, relearning our skills. Just don't be frightened. Have a go. It's, it's just a needle and a bit of fabric. Practice stitching. You can actually alter quite big things. You don't need a sewing machine to sew. You just need a needle and some thread. And Sally? Oh, I, I don't know. Um, I have recently become quite a fan of uh, mending things. So I've always made and altered things because I've and I've always bought things secondhand and, and altered them. But I think recently having kind of focused on this more, I've started mending things more. And actually I find that really enjoyable because it's hand sewing very often for me. And I'm finding that quite relaxing and soothing. So um, yeah, I've got a pair of jeans here that I've been kind of borrow mending. They've, they've got a piece of fabric on the inside. Why well, they was that is that where they've kind of worn worn down? Well they're completely yeah they've completely started to walk wear and I've patched them on the inside and then you use a running stitch just to um bond those two pieces of fabric together. It's enormously soothing <laughs> thing to do. Um yeah so that's something that you can give a go if you don't want to patch them on the outside. Mm. It's another way of, of um hold them back up again because they look really good. Um so that's one side they've also got the same well something similar going on down the fronts of the legs i'm trying to keep them in use for as long as possible because i absolutely hate buying jeans <laughs> so yeah, I'm just they also look really cool as well so it's multi-purpose isn't it they're completely unique there is not another pair like them in the world <laughs> and suzanne your any last tips well yeah, no, I mean, I'm I'm just going to snap out of this uh, this thing of not not sewing and 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 to start with repairing. I think it's a really good idea, and get onto the Zero Whistle's YouTube page, which is where we're going to be sharing all these these videos. There's already three up there, I think, Sally, isn't there? And you've you've done a few as well, which we're going to be uploading on onto there, and we'll, we'll share those on our Facebook page. But um, yeah, there's just there's no excuse for it, and I've just got in front of me some of those stats around you know the amount of clothes that are sitting in people's wardrobes and you know four thousand pounds worth of clothes that the average uk household owns and and i do think there's something about the value of clothes when you make your own or repair them then you're just going to value them a bit more especially when you make your own from scratch so yeah mm -hmm. yeah so and and going with what dawn was saying i think it's a good place to finish just don't be scared just give it what did you say dawn you said it's only fabric i think was what you it's said only right? fabric it's just a needle it's just some thread if you you know all you need and you just go in and out it's yeah. you know and you again you know you've just and that's all you've done to repair your your jeans isn't it it's just two pieces of fabric and you've stitched in and out in and out it doesn't have to be even it doesn't have to be neat and there's loads of stuff on YouTube that can show you how to do it. Yeah. There's, there's loads down there. I know we could all keep talking for ages more, uh, but we are going to have to finish. Thanks everybody as well who's been watching and joining in. I love the comments, really love the comments that we've got there. Uh, what does happen is we load these up to uh, YouTube afterwards and, and we get loads of views on them and, and, and we'll load more people will probably hopefully join in. Suzanne, again, tell people where, where to go for any more sort of resources, information yeah, and, on, and then we're done where to go for fabrication information as well. So we've got a lead Fashion Futures Facebook group, so definitely join that. We share everything on there. Uh, we're sharing the sewing videos on YouTube if you just type in Zero Waste Leads. And we're just about to, we've just created this new kind of hub on the Zero Waste Leads website, which hasn't launched yet, but it will be. And the, on there will be everything to do with this, this project, the three themes, the um, skills and resources, heritage and tradition, and uh, valuing your clothes so that all the sewing videos will be on there as well. Um, yeah, and just get involved in the chat on, on the Facebook group. Um, and uh, yeah, it, I mean, since we started this project, we've just uncovered so much activity around the city. And it's just like, it's like being a can of worms. I mean, there's so many people doing amazing things. So yeah, just get involved, I'd say. And Dawn, just a quick update for fabrication. Yeah, we're fabricationcrafts.co.uk online. We run classes, but obviously not at the moment. We're not allowed. 
Uh, if you're a designer and you want workspace, we rent out workspace affordably in the city centre. Um, and we also work with quite a few sustainable diet designers in our in our shop and in our workspace. We've got a couple um, at the moment in their wonky vintage or a new brand we've just set up and they um, um, you know kind of re-dye and, and take apart clothing and uh, and so, so if you are buying new there are designers who are making from old to new and fully sustainable um, so we're fully supporting we're just in the process of negotiating to expand that back in space as well in our building um, which will be amazing because we can do so much more with much more space mm. as well Brilliant. And Sally, good luck with, with your work that you're doing as well. Uh, Dawn uh, Bridal on here, she just says thank you as well. Thank you for listening. So, th yeah, thank you all. So I think we've come to the end here. There's going to be loads more stuff. Watch out. Uh, Zero Waste Fashion Week, 22nd of February. February. Yeah, last week of February. will be, be a whole week of activity that week. So Get yeah. ready, everybody, for a whole week <laughs> of fixed, repaired, hand-sewn, second-hand clothes. Can I say one last thing? Yeah, of course. It's just, sewing's not just for women. I know that's no. a whole other can, can of worms. No. <laughs> Definitely not. But it be, it's it's always really good to hear from men who sew because they are out there. <laughs> well, we've had some we've had some people with male names watching us on on here, so yeah. I don't know if they do so. But uh, yeah, it's not as you say. It's it's not just for women, right? We've got to finish now. See you all later. We'll see you next time. Get sewing. There we get get crafty, everyone. Get going. <laughs> see you later. Bye. Bye.